Okay, welcome back. Today I will be taking a look at the Monster Manual and figuring out the combat for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Last time I went ahead and created a character, um, created a character named Mountain. If you want to see the uh, steps I took to do that, that's in a different video. But in this video here, we're going to see if Mountain can go ahead and survive some battles. Um, some different creatures that I'm going to have Mountain uh, go ahead and fight against. Now, number one here is going to be the uh, giant frog. Now, the giant frog actually killed my first Dungeons & Dragons character way back in the early 1980s. So these, these exact rules, this exact frog. So we'll see if we can, can get some revenge here on this frog. Interestingly, reading back through these rules, I, yeah, I really should have been able to, to survive that attack. I must have had some really bad dice rolls at that time. But that is the giant frog. Then I'm going to go after a goblin. See how well Mountain does against one typical goblin. Um, number appearing is usually 40 to 400, so this goblin must have gotten lost off by himself somehow. And then finally, assuming that the first two battles go okay, he's going to encounter a kobold. Um, once again, 40 to 400 kobolds is what the expected number of kobolds, but we're just going to just going to have one show up for him. Otherwise, kobolds are equipped with uh, quite a range of weaponry and axes, uh, javelins, swords, spears, clubs. So kobolds can actually form quite a little army. But so we're going to start first with that frog. And I'm going to go through, be going through kind of slow here because I am still trying to work out the uh, rules for combat. Uh, if you watch the first video, I kind of touch on that. But basically, I was a pretty young kid at the time and I would roll the dice and people would tell me what happened. So I never really um, messed around with uh, combat too much in first edition, although I did play a lot of second edition. And it's really similar if you look at the combat tables. And I was kind of doing some reading and stuff too. That it's uh, basically if you just get your Thaco, the two hit armor class zero that second edition uses. It's essentially what uh, the uh, um, tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide is. It's just more spelled out for you. So in a way it's even easier if you want to go at it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and set up here real quick. Our first little combat scenario. And to do that, I'm just going to throw down I don't know, some water, maybe some rocks around that water. I'm sure, all the frogish isn't going sit, to be sitting in the middle of the uh, opening. You know, sometimes I use some of these little blue poker chips for water too. So, maybe some foliage. So there's some rocks, there's some foliage. Maybe there's could be some bigger bushes off to the side there. So, and these are literally just little Christmas tree decorations I picked up. Oh, I don't know, oh, quite a while ago, but I'm sure I got them like at a dollar store or something. And this here will be our hero. Um, playing the part of our hero will be Mountain today. And our giant frog. See if we can get some revenge for that character from all that time ago. His name was Scoobum. Scoobum. So we'll see if Mountain here can get revenge for Scoobum or if he'll uh, he'll suffer the same fate. So what we're gonna do first is I have the Dungeon Master's Guide uh, combat tables here already opened up and found. And these are the tables on page 74 for the fighter. And the table on page 75 for the monsters. And this includes goblins, hobgoblins, kobolds, and orcs. Now, for the giant frog, and we'll read through that entry real quickly. We 
and you know what my pages don't want to go to the right spot but for the giant frog looking at its uh entry um frequency they're on common number appearing usually five to 40 we're just going to have the one um, armor class will be seven so that's important to note and i'm actually going to write that down here real quick as we go so i'll write down frog ac is seven i'm not going to worry too much about movement we're just going to basically say they're going to um fight each other and to move move to fight each other right away and i can worry about surprise we could do well we'll just roll initiative um hit dice is between one and three or one a one d8 minus three is what that means that's not a range of one to three hit dice that's a one d8 because the hit dice is one d8 so this is one d8 minus three and that's how many hit points it would actually have minimum of uh, one of course and the damage per attack, because it's a small one, um, it's not going to be a um, be a uh, one to three, one to six, or a two to eight. So I believe one to three is what we would use here, and then we need to figure out. Grab our D eight. Give it a quick roll. And once you know it, our lovely frog got an eight. So he'll have eight hit points, but that was one D eight minus three. So he'll actually only have five hit points. Okay, because that's one D eight minus three. So he'll actually, so a mountain will have to put in a couple of good swings on him. Mountain, of course, can do one to eight uh, damage if he hits, so. There's a chance that he could put him down in one swing. But we're gonna go ahead and we will, you know what, let's just roll surprise real real quick here. I'm gonna roll 2d6. The black one will be for Mountain. The blue one will be for our friend the frog. We're just gonna roll it up real quick here. And Mountain got a three and the frog got a six. So if we check the surprise table really quick, just because the frog or because of how they roll that doesn't mean that page 63 ish or somewhere in there that's what i'm looking for there's the surprise section all right so party or in this case mountain roll a three all right, and the monster rolled a six. So in this case, there was no surprise effect because um, Mountain did get that three. The monster had a six, even though, there, even though you know the monster rolled a higher number, the surprise effect was none. Now, normally you wouldn't necessarily always roll a surprise. You'd only roll a surprise if there was a condition of surprise. But there's an entry for the giant frog, actually, that it's, uh, um, there's a, and I read it in there, that uh, it, it can actually, has less of a chance, or it, it, it can hide because of its camouflage and so on and so forth. So, so there's a good chance that he wouldn't have even seen it as he came walking up on it. So now this tongue is going to come flicking out, perhaps. And he's going to want to be swinging in his sword. So, to figure out initiative, that would be 3d6. So we've got our three dice here. Well, I'm going to do this. Is a, I'll do something like this here. We'll roll it into here. And I'll have a, it's a one, two, three. And this is, I'm rolling for Mountain right now. So Mountain rolled a uh, six. Now I'm gonna roll for the frog. Uh, looks like the frog is gonna go first cause two, six, and three is 11, which is way more than six. So even if uh, and Mountain does not have any kind of uh, reaction adjustment, 
because his decks were not that good. But even if he did, he probably wouldn't have had a plus five. So, Frog's going to go first. And because they're the same group, um, just kind of keep that um, going. Now, by the rules, uh, you're supposed to re re redo initiative every turn to see who gets to go first. Um, which is a change from more modern, where you figure it out at the beginning of the combat and then in the initiative stays. Uh, the big thing with uh, figuring it out every time is, you know, Mountain or the Frog could actually get to take two turns in a row. So they could, if they lost the initiative and they got to go and then they won the initiative, they could get to go rather than always just, you know, trading blows back and forth. So there's a chance that, that uh, it could make the combat a little bit more interesting. So we'll go ahead and start the combat. Okay, so first thing to figure out real quick, um, Mountain's Armor Class is 6. Uh, see that there? Mountain's Armor Class is 6. He has 7 hit points. To figure out what they need to roll to hit each other, um, Frog it needs to hit uh, Mountain's Armor Class of 6. So if we come and take a look at that in here, um, it's up to 1 minus 1. So if we come down here, we have a 15. So... The opponent's armor class, mountain's armor class. This is on the attack matrix for monsters. Look up mountain's armor class, our hero's armor class, which is six, meaning that for this monster, because his hit of his hit dice, um, he'll have to roll at least a fifteen. And for mountain, who looks on the fighter table, um, fighters, paladins, rangers, bards, and zero level halflings and humans table. There's a note about that. Um, because he's first level, and the uh, frog is a seven armor class, which is not very good. So Mountain only has to roll a thirteen to uh, hit to hit him. Um, a zero is kind of the baseline, the middle of the armor classes. Ten means basically you're wearing clothing, you know, just regular t-shirt shorts type thing. Don't really have any. In any armor at all in minus 10 you probably have some magical armor uh, you have some really good armor to get you to minus minus 10 like that if you can get around zero usually you're doing really good with uh, armor class so so essentially that is just a uh, FACO of second edition to hit armor class zero it's just in table form it's spelled out a little bit um actually more more clearly than it is in second edition um it's actually looking at these tables if you were to look at these tables it would make the understanding of FACO a lot a lot easier and if you started to get into second edition so but so he's going to need, need to roll a 13, and he's going to really need to roll a 15. So what that really means is Mountain has to roll a 13 through a 20 on the dice, and the Frog a 15 through a 20 on the dice, and that just in, you know takes into account their armor. Mountain, of course, having that scale mail and shield, and the Frog just having you know its normal natural armor. It doesn't have any other armor of its own. Okay, well, let's get into the combat then. Frog won the initiative, so Frog's going to go ahead and get to roll first. And we'll go ahead and roll the 20-sider for the frog. Get that out of the way. Frog rolled an 11, so the frog will miss because the frog had to roll at least a 15. Okay, so now it's going to be... Uh, Mountain's turn here. He sees that frog. That tongue came out. He did manage to avoid that tongue, but now he, he could turn and he could run it at this point. Completely avoid the frog, but Mountain has heard, you know, the uh, the uh, tale of of Scoobum and uh, wishes to avenge his death, thinking this is probably the same frog. So he charges forward and gets gets close enough so he can make his attack on the frog. So we'll go ahead and make our roll, and he just rolled a 20. So he's going to go ahead and be able to, to uh, do damage on that 20. 
Okay, so we rolled a 20 for Mountain, um, and I did actually have to stop and just verify real quick that in first edition, uh, 20 does not give you any extra damage. Starting in second edition, I think it was an optional rule, but in first edition, um, it was only critical fails, a 1 and a critical success, 20. It could be considered uh, actually for saving throws according to the Dungeon Master's Guide, uh, page 81. Uh, but that was only for saving throws, not for combat. So, um, he did roll a 20, so he will be able to do his damage. He does 1d8. He doesn't have, have any additional damage modifiers because his strength is only 14. So, well, he did 3 points of damage. Frog's hit points is only 5. So now the frog just has two hit points left. Um, by the rules, we should now re-roll initiative. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So again, it's 3d6 you, that you need to roll. I'm going to roll for the frog first. Okay, so uh, thir uh, 12 is what the frog got. And for our hero... And roll a 14. So our hero gets to go again. So if he's lucky again, there's a chance this frog is not going to have another turn, but we'll see. He has to roll a 13 or better to hit that frog. And he just rolled a 15. So he hit the frog. So here comes a moment of truth. The frog only has two hit points left. He just did five hit points of damage to that frog. After all these decades, Scoobum has been vindicated. And the frog lays dead. All right. All right, so we'll go on to our next uh, opponent. Uh, Mountain uh, continues his little quest and eventually encounters a goblin. Now a goblin has an armor class of six. Uh, they move a movement of six in, um, inches or 60 feet. Hit dice is 1 to 7 hit points, or a 1d8 minus 1. So we'll go ahead and roll that right away to find out how many hit points he has. And we'll just get these extra dice out of our way here, because they are in the way. Of course they are. So we'll go ahead and roll. Four minus one, so he'll have th only three hit points for the goblin. And there's actually a fair chance then that uh, if Mountain wins initiative, especially, he might be able to hit that guy. Um, now that guy does have a little bit better armor class, so he has this armor class of six. So with that whole idea of uh, Backo, I can guess what his armor or what the, what the two hits for that's going to be, but we can just go ahead and look it up on the table real quick for the sake of consistency. The mountain is trying to hit armor class six, so let's look at our uh, fighter table. Mountain is first level. Go down to armor class six, and he has to roll a fourteen. Um, as compared to the frog, whose armor class was seven. Um, so the goblin's armor class is a little bit better. So instead of having to roll only a 13 to hit the uh, got the uh, frog, Mountain will have to roll at least a 14 to hit the goblin. And then the goblin, to hit uh, Mountain's armor class, and Ar Mountain, once again, had, also has an armor class of 6. So if we just go over here to the attack matrix for monsters, and because it is a... A one minus one um, hit dice creature, and we can go ahead, and it is, and it is the one minus one because it's a, it was a one, a one to seven or a one d eight minus one. So to hit uh, armor class six, he's going to need a fourteen to hit uh, to hit mountain. So they need to, they they have the same two two hit number to hit each other. We both want to roll 14s. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get our, our actors on stage here. We got Mountain here. Get him where you can be seen. There's just a little 
big shield guy. And this is our goblin. So let's get our goblin. Got our little goblin toe mini here. And they are just going around doing their their uh, their normal business, their normal things that they would do. When all of a sudden they round a corner and are so uh, and encounter each other. Are they surprised? We don't know. Let's go ahead and find out. We're gonna go ahead and roll surprise. Now you wouldn't necessarily roll surprise for every encounter. You know, if a uh, mountain were to suspect that there was goblins up ahead, he wouldn't be surprised. If there was, if the goblins suspected mountain was around, you know, they wouldn't be surprised. They might just, you know, make their attacks out of out of the shadows and you know get that advantages right away. Um, plus four, I think it is. No, that's that's for thieves when they backstab. Anyway, I would have to look that up for sure. But blue will be the goblin and red will be mountain. Goblin's gonna go first. Actually, no, no, this is for for surprise. So five and two. So if we compare that back to our surprise table, we will discover that uh, there is going to be some surprise. I do believe. Okay, so if we look back at that surprise table, um, Mountain rolled a two, so the party rolled a two. And the monster rolled a five. So the party is going to be surprised because the party rolled a two, the party's die was a two, the monster's die was a five, so the party is going to be surprised. So we'll take a look now at the lost segments table. So the surprise difference, and that's five minus two. So the party will lose three segments of time. Now this is where the actual time starts to, to play in, uh, in, these, in these combats. Um, combat is divided into one minute period melee rounds or simply rounds in order to have a reasonably managed combat. Manageable applies to the actions, the combatants, and the actual refereeing of each melee, it will be no great task to devise an elaborate set of rules for highly complex individual combats um, and rounds, but a few seconds length is not in the best interest of an adventure game. However, to delve too deeply and cut and thrust and parry and repost the location of a hit or wound and sort of damage done, sprains, break. All right, so what this really means, my understanding is correct, is that uh, the uh, goblin... Um, gets to go right away, and the uh, hero would have to wait until the third segment of the round. Um, time is a little bit different in 1E compared to uh, some of the other versions. So a full round is 60 seconds. Um, a turn is 10 rounds and uh, or 10 minutes. And a segment is one tenth of a round, uh, six seconds. Um, so yeah, uh, basically for our little combat scenario, it just means that the goblin's going to get to attack first on this little surprise round. So he will do that by rolling his d20. And once again, he's looking to hit a 14 because uh, of the two hit tables that we looked up. He rolled an eight. So now we will roll initiative. Um, so we'll go ahead and roll a mount for a mountain first. Mountain rolled an 11. And we're gonna go ahead and roll for the goblin. And the goblin's having a really good day. So he just rolled a 15 first. So he gets to go first again. So he gets to try to hit, uh, hit uh, mountain again. And roll the 10. So he'd missed. Now Mountain's gonna finally be able to return the attack and he'll miss. Now we get to roll again for initiative. Remember you roll initiative at the beginning of every turn. So this time Mountain rolled a 14. 11 plus three is 14. The Goblin actually lost initiative this time. He only got a 12. 
So now we'll go ahead and see how Mountain just didn't quite make it. He rolled a 13, but he needed a 14. 13 would have uh, worked against the frog, but he needed a 14 for this guy. Now the goblin attacks. He's going to roll a 3. He'll miss completely. And here comes our initiative again. So we have a 14 for, for our hero. And only a 5 for the goblin. So our hero gets to go first. Hero rolled a 20. Hero's doing pretty good here. That's his second 20 of the day. So he's going to roll his damage dice now. And he only he did only roll a 1. But since this guy only has 3 hit points, that's not too bad. And he doesn't have any damage adjustments, of course, because his strength is so pathetic. Otherwise, we would have added the damage adjustments there, too. If his strength had... Uh, had actually had had some strength um, to do that with. We'll go ahead and roll initiative again for our hero. He's going to roll a 10. And the goblin is going to win initiative uh, once again with 15. So the goblin's going to go first. Goblin's going to hit. Uh, the goblin damage, according to the book here. Damage... Uh, for the goblin is one to six for or by his weapon we're actually going to use the the uh, one to six and he's oh he's he hit a mountain pretty good he did five points of damage to mountain there so mountains down to just two points of damage or uh two, just two hit points mountain better uh this this goblin might finish him this could be it for either one of them basically whoever hits next and he did not uh, probably did not win the initiative with an 8. But we'll find out. Here's, here comes the goblins. Yep, the goblin won the initiative with his 12. So the goblin's making his attack. Goblin hits. Goblin swings. Goblin gets that two hit points that he needed. Mountain goes down. That is the end of Mountain. He did manage to avenge for Scoobum's death all those years ago. But now... Mountain needs somebody to avenge his death. So Mountain falls down. The goblin rejoices for the goblin and takes him back and becomes a hero amongst his people. Outcast no more. Or maybe, you know, Mountain was just unconscious since he went to straight zero. Maybe he did survive his... Uh, his ordeal with death there. And he managed to sneak away. Full of hit points. Ready to fight the next day. So we're going to say he's back up to his seven hit points. He's sneaking away. He lost his, his fight against that goblin. That goblin won. But he snuck away. Getting close to getting back to civilization and to his friends. When he would encounter a kobold. All right, for the kobold, look up the same inf information um, and grab the armor class of seven. Hit points for a kobold is going to be uh, one to four, one minus four, so one d eight minus four. Which, where did he go? There it is. We'll roll his hit points real quick. So, six minus four is two. So, he only has two hit points. So, there's a, a chance that our uh, intrepid hero could be able to overcome this kobold and make it back to civilization after his humiliating defeat by the goblins. Or by the goblin, but... We'll find out. Now he has two hit. Two, two hit mountain. Because the um, mountain's armor class isn't going to change. Um, um, mountain's armor class is six. They let him keep his, his uh, weapons and armor. But I'll go ahead and just double check on this chart here. The kobolds are included. And that's... 1d up to 1d8 minus 1. So we're going to be on this chart. 
And so he's going to have to hit him with a 15, just, just, just like that frog did. So to hit Mountain, he's going to have to roll a 15. And needed to hit the Kobold. We double check the chart here. Kobold's uh, armor class, we said, was 7. And it's 13, just like the frog. So, and the battle goes just like the uh, previous battles have. I'm not going to roll surprise this time. Um, neither one of them were surprised. They saw each other. They couldn't avoid each other, chose not to avoid each other, whatever the case might be, but they were not surprised. So just go straight into initiative. You don't have to, you only do surprise when and if it makes sense to do surprise. You don't have to have a surprise round. I did for the first couple just to kind of experiment with it, but it's normally you probably would not have a surprise round going on. So, oh, Mountain did pretty good there. He rolled a 17 for his uh, opening initiative. And he's, Kobold only got a 7, so Mountain's ready to redeem himself after that humiliating defeat there by the uh, Goblin. So Mountain swings. He only gets a two, so he's going to miss. The Cobalt's going to swing with a five, and he's going to miss. So now we're going to re-roll initiative again. So nine for our, our hero. And 12 for the, for the Cobalt. So the Cobalt gets to go first this time, and the Cobalt misses. And Mountain's going to hit him with an 18. So Mountain gets to uh, see his damage. Mountain did five points of damage, which is more than the hit points that he had. And so miraculously, the, the kobold did make it back home and was able to, or Mountain was able to make it back home. And when he tells the story, he tells the heroic story of how he defeated the frog and defeated the kobold. But for some reason, he always forgets about his fight with the goblin. Well, I hope this has been interesting. Um, I'm sure that uh, this has been... Uh, I know for certain it was an experience for me to kind of remember how this all works. So if it's of use to or of value or interest to anybody, uh, thank you for watching. Bye.